This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial is about the Java API documentation. This is the overview page in the HTML in the web browser. It shows in the middle panel an alphabetical listing of all the packages and in this left panel over here are all the classes listed alphabetically. If you scroll down there are hundreds of classes. We're going to look at the string class. So we'll scroll way down to the S's down here. And even within the S's there's so many classes available in this class library. There's string. Click on string and here we see the string class. It shows us the inheritance hierarchy here. String inherits directly from object. Any interfaces that it implements, it implements these interfaces here. And then there's some descriptions about the class and its usage. Next are the fields in the class and the constructors. As you can see there's a number of constructors here for string. If you click on one of these it'll take you to it. We're going to go down to the methods. Here are the method names in alphabetical order, their signatures, their return types. Let's look at the substring methods. Here they are. There's two of them. One takes an integer, a begin index, returns a string, and the other takes both a begin index and an end index. The comment here for the first one says returns a new string that is a substring of this string. Let's click on this function and go look at it. Here's the uh, signature for the function at the top, a description, some examples, parameters, begin index, what they mean, the return value, and any exceptions that it throws. So looking at this, the begin index is the beginning index inclusive. This example here says if you have the string unhappy, right here is a string literal and you take the substring beginning at 2 you're going to get happy because strings when you're dealing with indexes into them they're zero relative so that's the u is in 0, the n is in 1 and the h is in 2 so it begins at 2 inclusive and takes the substring beginning there to the end of the string. As it says here returns a new string that is a substring, begins with the character at the specified index, and extends to the end of the string. So you can see how this is very useful when you want to understand what the different functions are. We could hit the back arrow and go back to the list, but you can see below it here is the other substring function. This one takes both a begin index and an end index. The begin index is the same as in the previous function, but now we have an end index. And notice the difference here. The end index is exclusive. It does not include that index. So it returns a string, it's a substring, begins at begin index, and extends to the character just before end index. Here again, an example, hamburger substring beginning at 4, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is the U, and then going up until but not quite 8, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is the R, it will get the E but not the R, so you get urge, that substring there. Again, the Java doc documentation here is very useful to help you understand how to use the classes available, the hundreds of classes available in the different packages in the Java class library. 
Now we're going to look also here at the source code for these two functions. So we're going to switch over, um, but first we're going to talk a little bit about the tool called Javadoc that creates this HTML documentation. So we'll switch over to something on that. Here is some content from a web page that describes how to use the Javadoc tool that generates the HTML documentation directly from comments in the source code files, the Java source code files. Here's an example. It says here that to write these special comments called doc comments, they're written in HTML, so there are some HTML tags that you can put in them, like the paragraph tag, code tags, and they precede a class, field, constructor, or method declaration, and they're made up of two parts, a description, this part up here, and they're followed by block tags. The main tags, as they show in this example, are for parameters. Here's a param tag, a return value, and see also tags. Notice that these comments begin not just with the slash star, but slash two stars, and then they end with the star slash. And the description part is first, and then the block tags follow. And when programmers write comments like this, they, the tool transforms it into that documentation we were just looking at over in the Java API. Let's go look at the source code now for those two string functions. Here's the source code for string.java, and in there we've found the substring with the begin index integer parameter and it returns a string and notice above it here this documentation comment has a description part the param tag for the begin index and its brief description here the return type and also the exceptions the exceptions that are thrown here so this is how functions can be documented with comments to automatically be able to produce API documentation. And this is not limited just to the Java class library. When you write your own Java source code, you can do this as well. For simple instructional purposes, we don't do this, but we are now in this tutorial here commenting on it because it is part of understanding what professional programmers really do as part of their job. Let's look at the other function here. Scroll down, it's right beneath it. This is the one with the begin index and the end index. Again, a description, the begin index parameter, the end index parameter, the return value exceptions that are thrown from that. Let's go back to the API documentation after having looked at these uh, source code comments. Here we are back at the API documentation and now you can see how those the param tag for this parameter gets translated into parameters and then the text that was shown there returns, throws, the signature up here, the description, and all this came automatically at only the cost of developing those special documentation comments according to the syntax, the format required by the Javadoc tool.